cameras are about to hold a briefing for us to bring us up to date on the mission itself and what lies ahead for the rover which will be scouring the surface of the red planet. We are now uh, more than 48 hours into this mission after the Pathfinder crash landed onto Mars Friday. And uh, in the wake of some technological problems at first, some initial communication problems between the modem between the rover and its base on Mars, uh, those problems have all been cleared up. And in the words of one of the mission controllers, the Pathfinder rover and all instruments are fully functional. We are going to be learning in the coming minutes what uh, its mission will be in the coming hours. Let's go now to Pasadena and listen in on what's being said. Put some smiles on a lot of wonderful people here. I've been uh, working the last uh, four or five years trying to get the, uh, this vehicle built in, uh, and to Mars. Uh, we're on we're on the surface now, ready to begin our uh, operation, and uh, looking forward actually to uh, probably getting back into something of a routine. Although there is never a routine day on the rover, and particularly not on the rover on Mars. But for us, getting into a, a more normal operations pattern in which uh, uh, we'll be uh, sending commands to the vehicle and making decisions about uh, where the vehicle should go and what it should do. And we, we've had a bit of a rocky time getting the vehicle on the surface of Mars. Is yeah. that all stabilized now, or can we uh, anticipate smooth going? Or you never really know what's happening on Mars, do you? You don't, you don't really know. And I think the first uh, uh, first couple of days here is an opportunity for us to uh, um, sort of test some things out with the vehicle. Uh, give us a little bit of experience in driving on the surface and uh, uh, getting to various locations. Uh, uh, certainly, as we progress through the uh, uh, through the next few days, uh, that information will give us a, a real uh, a leg up on how to <clears throat> be more efficient in our operations and a little bit more reliable in getting targets and doing things. But uh, certainly, certainly, we, we certainly continue to expect surprises in some sense as right. we, as we, we go should on. really point out that the hardest part. I mean, one of the hardest parts of the mission is getting down off the pad the whole uh, stand-up procedure of the rover, uh, the deployment of the ramps, the understanding of the images in this new world for us, uh, and then making sure that it's safe to get the rover down <clears throat> those ramps is, uh, is, is not an easy operation. We've been practicing it uh, now for a good eight months, and we've done it, I can't, countless number of times. And there's almost always some issue. And, uh, you know, now that we're down on the ground, I think you can uh, tell from our uh, our faces last night that we're we're feeling pretty good. We're ready to take her out for a, uh, a Sunday drive. <laughs> <laughs> Although looking at the terrain, it uh, it's it's a pretty scary uh, drive. I mean, it looks like the ramp is really the easy part once you get the. On the I think, surface, I think the drive down things. was a pretty smooth, easy job for us. Now we've got our work cut out for us. Uh, there's a lot of interesting rocks to explore, and the, the terrain uh, has rocks of various sizes, some of which the rover can drive over, some will have to go around. And uh, the scientists are pushing us to go to, go to really distant, interesting uh, areas. And of course, we'll probably be sticking close to the lander early on and getting uh, the uh, easiest science opportunities out first. Yeah, we're, we're in fact trying to optimize the amount of science we can gather in the early stages while we're still getting as much telemetry down to figure out what's going on with the rover while we're on the surface. Um, as you know, we did have a comm problem early on. We're still experiencing a little problem with that communication interface, and we want to try to get as much data on that today as possible, but we're still actually going to try to get a rock today, and that's something we're all very excited about, and we're really looking forward to getting the uh, next high gain session this evening. Now, the, uh, by getting a rock, you're talking about putting the, the instrument, the APX. Alpha proton X-ray spectrometer actually down on a rock, and that was something we didn't think we would do on our first full day on the surface, but um, the science folks really pushed us to attempt this, and we felt that uh, we can do that in the course of still trying to get as much engineering telemetry to understand this interface as we could. So this is going to be a very exciting day for us. We're really excited about what we're Hank, doing. Hank Moore, the rover scientist, uh, calls it uh, shopping for rocks. <laughs> Why don't you describe just briefly what, what that really means? I understand it's a 10-hour it's a procedure. Uh, oh, well, the measurement, integration. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the measurement, <clears throat> the science measurement is uh, is developed over a course of, of several hours of uh, of having the instrument actually on the surface of uh, of the object. Uh, the uh, um, the data is actually built up over time, and uh, it's really toward the end of the uh, process that you get your best resolution of information. And uh, that resolution, when uh, graphed as a spectra, uh, you know, against the, the various elements, tells us the abundances of the individual elements in the uh, in the rock or the soil. Uh, so it uh, it's the sort of thing we tend to relegate to the nighttime hours, since uh, during the day the 
of vehicles is, is powered by sun and actually roaring to do something, go, you know, to drive, whatever. And uh, so we tend to uh, work the other parts of our operation during the, uh, uh, the daytime hours on Mars and, and get into a position where we can put the APXS down and do this uh, measurement overnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, where is the rover and what, what is the procedure or plan for today? Maybe I can yeah, talk about that. Last night, we, uh, after we saw it successfully go and reach its rest position, I put on my goggles and I could tell that uh, it, the, the rover was at an angle. And, and, and I didn't really notice that until I looked in stereo. It wasn't really obvious. Um, that suggests to me that we're either on a slight berm or the, or the rear wheel is on, on a rock. But uh, this is a rock we could probably easily go over. Um, it looked like it'd be the, the smartest thing to do is just to turn in place and go right for that rock. We have a bunch of other things in the sequence, including taking pictures and doing uh, a little soil experiment. And so that's what we planned to do uh, last night. So we, last night we were working on that. And uh, it turns out this rock is a particularly uh, wrong size for, for the APXS to be put on. It's, if it was higher, if it was more like a wall surface, we'd be able to back straight up mm -hmm. and, and place it uh, right on it. It really wants to be a square orthogonal kind of fit to it. Uh, at, but, and if the rock is a lot lower, we have the ability to deploy the apex S head right onto uh, the top of the rock. But this is just kind of in the middle, so there's a chance that we'll hit it at, at a corner, and it won't be a perfect fit. But we decided to give it a try, and we can always refine that the next day. That's great. Actually, to complete that answer, uh, we have uplinked the sequence this morning already, so we know where the rover was at the end of the day last night. Um, the rover is now sitting there and it's operating. Uh, it's probably just imaging still. It's till, still too early in the Martian day to, to start driving operations. But we're going to be taking images of the lander, so we're going to reciprocate. Uh, for the last couple of days, the lander's been taking images of us. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to send back, uh, hopefully, some nice pictures of, of what the lander really landed on. Um, in the next hour or so, we expect the rover will start traversing, moving around, uh, trying to kick up some soil, um, turn its back to the rock, and actually try to find that rock. Uh, it's really exciting. Yeah. What you said so far, I've got about 15 different questions on different topics, but I want to get for a moment on, on driving operations. You said put the goggles on, and uh, you are the rover driver, and I guess the first question I have is, what kind of license do you need to do yeah. that? That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of funny you should mention that. I do have a official rover, Mars rover driver's license. To, <laughs> it was uh, submitted by the state of Washington, signed by the governor, and actually Vice President Al Gore. Um, <laughs> and he, he has no tickets yet. Yes, no tickets. I doubt we'll be speeding, so I think I'll be pretty safe there. But uh, so that's that's sitting right next to me, so I'll be legal for for driving. That's great. Um, but the actual procedure involves uh, looking at a computer screen, and I'm able to put on these 3D goggles. They they allow me to look at the screen in with an extra sense of depth, and this is really critical for us to determine where there are drop-offs behind hills, or uh, if if I can sneak between two rocks. It, it's really a, an important feature. I'm able to move this 3D joystick, uh, and I move this icon on on the screen, mm -hmm. and the system calculates for me. Uh, where I'm telling the rover to go. So uh, we build up a series of commands over the day and we tell the rover go to point A, point B. And we don't really tell it how to get there, but uh, it knows to try to go in a straight line unless something is in the way. And so it really can't uh, tell you operate uh, like a, a radio control car. You're, you're about to get a demo uh, where we're, we're actually tell you operating with uh, real time. So uh, that wouldn't work for Mars because of the, the time delay. Uh, about, a, about 11 minutes from here to Mars. So we came up with a scheme where we made the rover smart enough to avoid obstacles, and that means that even if I screw up and tell it to go over a cliff, it shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's the interesting thing. I mean, the rover right now is, is operating on Mars. It's, it's actually moving from one place to the other, but you're the driver and you're sitting here. Right, it's kind of strange. And we, normally we would, uh, I, like, I did most, most of this last night. Uh, I, got, I finished 6.30 this morning and went to sleep. So during the, uh, the cycle uh, that we're going to be in, we'll be normally planning and driving, so to speak, uh, while the rover's asleep, and, and I'll be sleeping when the rover's driving. So the rover's actually moving. sort of asleep at the wheel in a, yeah. in a strange sense. <laughs> as you can hear, a very jovial move at uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena as the mission controllers for the Mars Pathfinder mission discuss uh, what lies ahead. The, the uh, rover probe right now is sitting on the Martian soil, as you could hear them say. Uh, they believe it's sitting at an angle, perhaps one of the rear wheels, one of the six wheels of the probe, sitting on a rock at the moment. And uh, what they didn't mention was that it takes 10 minutes for their commands to go from Earth to Mars. Uh, so that when they uplink, that's the amount of time it takes to reach the rover itself, and then it will begin moving. You heard uh, Brian Cooper mentioning that he'll be operating the probe with 3D goggles. Uh, you can see the model looks a lot smaller than uh, it does in those pictures from Mars. It's only about a foot high, yet that's a $25 million machine.
And we'll be telling you more about it and what lies ahead in the mission coming up in a few minutes on Prime News. So please stay with CNN for more on the Mars Pathfinder mission.